hello and welcome everyone to this channel before going to this video i want to make three points very clear to you number one that i make detailed analytic videos about different topics of literature these videos are long and i don't summarize the text because that is not the purpose of studying literature number two i hope that you have read the text before coming here and you have come here to have an understanding of the text a profound understanding of the text and I also hope that you are not watching this video just the day before exam because then this video won't help you if you have have no idea of the text point number three is that studying literature requires freedom of thought and that's why if you have an immovable stack of sentiments this video may hurt your feelings you are advised to watch at your own discretion thank you now let's move on so the topic that we are going to talk about today is manik bondopadhyay's the final solution now up to this point i have made a few videos on uh, various texts of partition literature i hope that you have gathered some ideas about uh, partition literature by now that uh, what it portrays how it is written and uh, about the impact of partition what was partition everything so let's directly uh, move on to uh, manik bandopadhyay's story manik bandopadhyay was born in 1908 and died in 1956 aged 48 years He had a literary career of uh, 28 years, in which uh, he wrote about uh, 38 novels and uh, more than 300 short stories. Uh, he was uh, he was quite uh, a realist in his stories, and because his father. Uh, had a job which made him move from uh, one place to another uh, manik grew up uh, gathering a lot of experience uh, of seeing different kinds of people in bihar in east bengal in west bengal and he uh, developed a good uh, insight a great insight um, about the human psyche and his stories always uh, delve deep in the in, into the uh, human mind and uh, his stories always uh, try to focus on the the underprivileged class psychology of uh, human beings Uh, different nuances of uh, the whatever goes on inside our brains and uh, thirdly he uh, focuses on reality as it is like there are some kind of uh, writers who prefer to write about reality but with uh the viewpoint of or uh, from the from the perspective of uh their sense of idealism but manik bandopadhyay portrays reality as it is he doesn't uh he doesn't concern his, himself more with uh, the idealism but he tries to understand what reality is and why it is what it is so this story is a pretty dark story this uh, final solution why first of all this story is a sad one of course it portrays the impact of partition but that is not why i am calling it a dark story this is a dark story because as manto was you know charged uh uh because you know he he was accused of uh, obscenity in his uh, stories just like that manik's uh, 
short story final solution gives a solution at the end which you know by now that it is murder that is the solution mullika finds the solution in committing a murder and she tells us that she is going to going to do some more murders if needed to survive now that is not something which we can say lawful it is not lawful to to you know commit murder but this is the solution given in the story from the perspective of mallika that is why i am calling it a dark story because society or law or you know our traditional sense of morality won't approve of such solutions so we have to understand why manik bandopadhyay is uh, writing about it and why he is talking about such a solution which is a dark one why so first of all uh, let's uh, look at the first paragraph and if you if you uh, just read the first paragraph you get the idea that some days before uh, it was all right they had home they had you know things that belong to them now they are dispossessed people dispossessed uprooted from their home because of partition and they have come to kolkata and they are you know they have come naturally they have come from east bengal to west bengal they are a hindu family so naturally they came from east to west and they are uh, living uh, in a in a in a railway uh, in the in the shelter of a railway platform the shelter is uh, like there are too many people all around and they have very little space so each of the families uh, they are you know it it is a congested place all over uh, i can't help but suggest you to uh, watch some of uh, ritik ghatok's films to to get the picture i mean even if you watch uh, the movie uh, the film bari theke paliye uh, which is a which is a happy movie uh, made for children you 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 will see that there there is detailed portrayal of the streets of calcutta the railways and everything where there are numerous uh, people and their their you know uh, situations uh, which is very sad to look at so i suggest i suggest you to uh, watch some of uh, riti ghatok's works to understand uh, the impact of partition anyway they are four people in this family mallika her husband bhushan uh, their two and a half year old son kokon and a widowed sister in law asha so we have to get the structure straight we have to understand the structure straight first of all mallika is our protagonist we know that bhushan is the uh, you know the uh, male figure of this family the uh, he he should be in charge i mean according to patriarchy he should be in charge and uh, he is the uh, first of the family members but he is ill he has got malaria so he is unable to find a work he is unable to uh, you know rescue his family from this dire situation there is this widowed sister in law that means bhushan's sister asha we look at asha as a burden from the patriarchal uh, point of view we look at asha as a burden because widowed sister in law of mallika 
and we shall see the 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 you know the tension between these two sometimes the tensions will be there sometimes uh, it will be uh, not so much but this relationship is important and there is a child now the structure is mullika as a wife according to the patriarchal system is dependent or should be dependent should be subordinate to uh, Bhushan, her husband. Whereas the child is, of course, Bhushan's responsibility, but there is a particular uh, nuance here that a mother's responsibility towards her child is more, somewhat more than the father's responsibility because the mother worries so much about her child. It is a part of her body, literally. It, it comes as a part of her body. So there is a there is a there is more emotion from the mother's side uh, towards the child naturally and uh, mullika is having that responsibility of feeding that child but the responsibility of earning and running the family is you know the responsibility of bhushan who is suffering from malaria and they have the four people they are living on one mattress on a railway platform that is the condition of their living the child has no food and the women are you know they are just living they are not in a good condition they are just living and hoping that something would come up this is the situation if you go on to, to uh, the next few paragraphs you will understand that there are three agencies that come to them or not come to them there are three agencies first of all of course you know about Promoto he comes from the uh, welfare association sorry uh, help and welfare society help and welfare society so he comes from uh, like an NGO, you can say, and there are two uh, young uh, persons, a, uh, a young man and a young uh, woman. Uh, they also come to speak to Mullika afterwards about Pramato and his uh, whatever he does, his intentions and everything. That is another agency. And there is the agency of the, the, the law and order or you can say the government which is absent. So there are three agencies. Number one, people migrated because of partition. Partition was done uh, by, the, by the leaders of the nation, the British and government knew all about it, but they did not predict, the Bengal government and at the time, they did not predict that uh, people uh, would be migrating in so many numbers and uh, they did not predict that they were not prepared. So they were, what should I say, uh, callous to that... Uh, predicament uh, that 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 situation that came they were uh, totally blind to it and they were uh, not able to uh, you know cope with it at the same time so the government is 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 is, is not present here the government's uh, policies or they are you know why is a government why is a government there i mean wherever it is why is a government why does a government exist to provide law and order to provide safety and security to ensure that the society runs smoothly and to work for the betterment of the society towards a better future to, to take different policies to improve the current conditions of a society but here the governmental agency comes through a police only remember you have you have read the text and you know for just for one moment a police comes and warns mullika not to talk to strangers 
that's it he doesn't even listen to mallika whatever she has to say he doesn't care that is symbolically the representative of the government the government cannot cope with the situation and they are indifferent or neglecting or just you know they just gave up absence of the government presence of the young boy and girl or i should say young man and woman who came up to mallika and said that she shouldn't uh be uh, uh lured away by people like promotho because he uh, the 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 people like promotho they uh, have uh, bad intentions and everything they are powerless i mean the young man and the young woman the 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 uh, perhaps uh, they were students uh, from a college or something like that they are volunteers they are powerless so they have good intentions no power government is indifferent and there are there is another agency agency of such uh, uh, people who are opportunists who make profit for themselves out of the vulnerabilities of uh, other people okay promotho symbolizes that kind of an agency he comes and now now we can move on uh, to discuss how this agency works promotho comes promotho talks to mallika and uh, he talks to you know he not just only uh, uh, talking to mallika but he he talks to other people as well because he is trying to catch some you know vulnerable people out of this dire situation so he is just uh, going to different people as well as to mallika and he is just giving some you know showing some kind of a condolences to these people that if i could do i would do i am trying to do something for you but you have come here in in so many numbers uh, so many people here we are not being able to do as much as we wish to do etc they he is just you know politely trying to say such words so that and he has a kind of there is there is a phrase his outlook is like you know he was a, a middle aged peter familias that means he looks like a middle aged man and his figure is like a father figure like his figure his his appearance is like you can trust this man or something like that a father figure kind of thing also this can have another meaning that a father figure in a patriarchal society it, it can mean that a father figure who can uh manage to manipulate others by just you know speaking or instructing them or directing them uh, towards certain directions you know he he can be quite an autocratic figure who speaks something to you and you believe and follow that thing whatever he has instructed you to do so that kind of a figure a father figure a quite a uh, uh, trustable or i should i should say that uh, you can trust him and at the same time you cannot neglect him or you cannot refuse him he has such an appearance that is a, a talent that he has and he doesn't get angry he just you know he provides some condolences to people but gives them nothing just you know saying like ah, if i could do things for you i would i am trying but i can't and day by day these people naturally they go to a, a, a worse uh, they, they they reach a worse situation than the day before because food is being reduced day by day money is not there and the place is being congested more and more 
places the place wherever they are living uh, on the street or on the platform wherever there are every day there are new uh, uh, numerous people new people they are coming and they take the place they occupy the place and the place gets more and more congested so naturally the situation worsens every day promoter comes every now and then but doesn't give anything except his condolences except his sympathetic words frustration grows inside those who are suffering from the situation so naturally mullika shows some of that frustration and uh, says that uh, shape up did you say should we try to if that is what is needed then i am ready to stand up straight and behave responsibility here i am throwing my hands out dancing and screaming for attention what more is left so i am trying to do but i am i am trying to do whatever i can i am ready to do whatever i can but i cannot get anything to do to get some money to feed my child to uh, get get ourselves out of out of this place so that is what frustration and anger uh, looks like and it comes out of uh, mullika's mouth but promotho doesn't get angry he uh, as uh, manik has uh, written down the narrator uh, says that uh, promotho was a re realist he was unusually aware so promotho is he looks like a realist and he looks like a calm cool man and as if he sympathizes with mullika's anger and frustration but he is a calm version of it and he is understanding what is going on but he is not responding uh, in an angry way because as if because he is a realist actually he is an opportunist he understands the reality of the situation and he is you know trying to get something out of it so Promotho just you know tries to calm Mullika down and says that what can I say? You have come in waves, flooding the city. The government is unable to cope. How many people can we look after? It's all God's handiwork, like a deluge or an earthquake. It is God who makes poor, insignificant men like us do what He wants. Or else, why should we get perturbed about the sufferings of women like you and come running to help? So, he is speaking with a sad tone that he is trying to do things. Uh, he is trying to help these people, but they have come in so many numbers that numerous people are everywhere and they cannot cope with it. Government, of course, they cannot cope with it and... Pramato says that their organization cannot cope with it. But it pains them and that's why he comes every day. Actually, the reason is different. We know that because we have read the story already. I think you have and that's why you know that. But he tells that it's all God's handiwork. And that is another important point. That, that's why I have told you that this is a pretty dark story because it shatters all our uh, it questions all our beliefs in the in the beliefs in the system in traditional morality and in god itself and in the agency of government he questions he he, he manik questions and manik makes us doubt about these ideas like if a government doesn't work properly we can understand that that makes people suffer and people have the right to blame the government change it or you know act about it something like that we know that if the justice system if the law and order is not there the final solution the whole story is about that if the law and order is missing then what can you do it comes at the end of the story also, it's all God's handiwork. You see, 
whenever we are in a good situation we thank god as believers whenever in a bad situation we are in a bad situation we get our frustration and uh, we throw our frustration at people around us also there are some people who tell us that it's all god's handiwork we have to know a bit about manik to understand this uh, particular phrase because manik bandhupadhyay was a uh, learned a learned man about you know the freudian writings the the, uh, the writings of marx lenin and he was himself a communist and naturally naturally if you are a man who have seen world wars not one but two you have seen plague flu then the famine of 1942 you have seen um, uh, riots you have seen partition massacres and everything you have seen these things you cannot with a sane mind with a functional brain you cannot believe in the illusion of god anymore naturally manik doesn't and in this story mullika believes god and promotho says according to his 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 uh, dialogue here Uh, we can say that pramatho talks about god as if he believes in god but we know that pramatho is the criminal here uh, that proves that even if he believes in god or he doesn't th- that doesn't matter god is not coming to do anything in this situation right so mullika to mullika he says that it's all god's handiwork whenever we can't cope with a situation we can't accept a fact or we can't act about something we get this constant illusion and we throw all the responsibility on that illusion the illusion called god that it's all god's plan it's all god's handiwork it's all god's you know whenever something comes to you something happens that you cannot explain you take a kind of x constant that is god you don't know what it is if you define that god is all powerful and all good that means it is an entity with all goodness and all power then why is evil all around this is epicurean logic this is this is basic logic from uh, two and a half thousand years ago and as a, as a, as a, as a learned man like manik who read marx freud nietzsche and everything like that the, the those philosophies focus on focus on uh, reality the hard reality of living they do not these philosophies do not focus on the abstract ideal world and you know such uh, you know fairy tales naturally manik is trying to depict before us how the world god exists in our uh, lives uh, whenever we are in such a such a such a situation mullika replies that why take the name of that disgraceful being mullika doesn't deny the existence of god mullika is a common she belongs to the common people she is not an intellectual that's why she she doesn't deny the existence of god but she says that why take the name of that disgraceful being so she is angry about the existence or the 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 idea of god she is angry about it she is not telling that it doesn't exist she is telling that that is a disgraceful being why that is anger that is frustration because you are taught you are you have heard from from childhood you have heard uh, 
many uh, ideas about God like uh, I can give you one instance like uh, you have heard the shlok yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata abhutthanam adharmasya tadatmanam suyamaham puritranaya sadhunam vinashaya cha dushritam dharma samasthapanarthaya sambhavami juge juge literally it can be translated as uh, whenever uh injustice prevails and righteousness is suppressed righteousness or dharma is suppressed i will come i shall come i means god shall come uh, from time to time on this earth to save the good people from the bad ones to destroy the bad ones and make justice prevail this is this is uh, as far as i can translate the uh, shloka so you have heard the shloka many times in in many occasions this is a common thing to hear have you ever in a dire situation thought about it that this is injustice going on if dharma samastha panarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge was right how is that working so this is in our core beliefs whenever we are happy or in a, in in a situation uh, where we can you know move on with life uh, average daily life we have no you know we are not in a dire situation we are not in a very critical situation we think that these words are true these words are to be believed these words are uh, some kind of valuable words but when the actual situation comes when you are in the middle of a riot when you are in the middle of a famine when you are uh, suffering from the impact of partition when you are uprooted from your home these beliefs are shattered because reality struck you and that's when with anger of course there is there is a a, a very deep belief in the existence of god so it cannot be uprooted straight away but at least the anger comes and that's why she says why take the name of that disgraceful being again manik uh, you know uh, in the next page manik uh, writes that mullika says oh god even this was in my fate mullika had called out to god out of habit that is that is a, a, a kind of poking out of habit most of the times we understand if we have a sane mind if we have a rational mind we understand that this illusion of god and whatever we discuss about it is nothing but a fairy tale and just like fairies don't exist god don't ex doesn't exist and uh, we understand that that we have to act upon situations there is there is no you know justice doesn't come out of the sky so naturally we we know that but it is in our uh, habit to call the name of god uh, just as a, a, a phrase uh, without any particular uh, meaning i mean it is not that necessarily it is not that uh, mullika is crying out to god uh, praying or something like that it just comes out of her mouth like a habit so god or oh god or whatever that kind of thing is just a habit that we are carrying on according to manik and of course mullika has understood what the job is all about because promotho has we just as mullika accepted the idea given by promotho that that promotho can uh, uh, give a job to mullika the women mullika asha but not to bhushan because there are no jobs for men available mullika has understood that it is not something uh, very respectable in a in a patriarchal society uh, 
of course any job if women uh, wants to do jobs or something like that it was not uh, encouraged by patriarchal society that was quite you know uh, dishonorable or something like that but as soon as promotho tells that i can give you to women i can give you uh, jobs but i cannot give job to bhushan mullika has understood that this is some kind of a dishonor that is coming and mullika is just you know expressing her sadness that her her fate was so bad that she she uh, had to suffer so much and she is suffering now and she ha she is going to do a job which is not very uh, promising uh, in the situation she is calling out to god in frustration not believing that god would wo uh, good uh, god would do something for her but it's out of a habit now uh, as long as you know uh, as soon as uh, mullika accepted the uh, offer given by uh, promotho you see promotho did not help with any money up until now but just as mullika says that yes she can accept the offer promotho gives her a little bit of money uh, and tells ramlochan to buy some milk for the child and uh, assigns ramlochan to stay there so that uh, bad people do not come uh, near them and uh, do not lure them away or you know like that so you can get the idea of promotho and when the uh the 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 uh, boy and the girl they come in and uh, they ask mullika about uh, what was uh, promotho uh, offering to mullika and everything mullika answered them and they told mullika to complain but the problem is promotho did not do anything wrong up until then so mullika could not complain legally she could not complain that this man is a bad man plus mullika is in a dire situation she requires a shelter food for her child and everything so she is she has no option to to uh, you know uh, go for a legal fight against a man uh, against whom she has no evidence so mullika is helpless the boy and the girl they are helpless because they are young men they are not wronged in any way by promotho and they cannot catch him they cannot you know uh, take uh, any action against them against promotho at the same time the policeman comes because ramlochan brings the policeman and the policeman interrogates these two people the boy and the girl takes their names and addresses and tells mullika not to talk to strangers and goes away when mullika asked that i am in such a situation what can i do the policeman has no reply he just he doesn't care to listen to mullika he just goes away his duty is done the policeman is symbolizing the government the agency who is just doing just you know its uh, duties as far as uh, it cannot be neglected or you know so it is not humane enough to look at the situation and go uh, sorry run the extra mile uh, to provide support to people it is not interested in that government is not interested in that and the policeman is representing the government and the law of course so 
that is the situation the boy and the girl have good intentions they do not have any power the government have power but they are you know doing nothing and this man promotho and uh, such organizations uh, they have got some power out of the inactive government because of the inactive government because the government is callous people are suffering and because of their suffering they are being vulnerable they are being too weak they cannot resist offers like this and that's when the opportunity comes to these people and they take the opportunity to profit from other human beings sufferings so another point uh, that uh, comes now is that mullika and asha they are talking to each other and they are they are you know they are trying to save themselves like mullika is thinking about that thakur ji you are the you are the uh, responsible person for all our ruin that, uh, she says that uh, thakur ji you are the cause of our ruin get to work bring us some relief why because as i have uh, already mentioned thakur ji or sister in law widowed sister in law is a burden you are the responsibility of my husband you are an extra stomach to feed so you are a burden it is always in the patriarchal society it is thought that an unmarried woman and a widowed woman is always a burden she is a burden and mullika is trying to you know make her feel guilty about it that you know you are a burden now you know we are a family and we feed you uh, like you are an extra stomach you are an extra burden that we shouldn't uh, have had but uh, you you are here and in our good times you eat with us so now in our bad times you should you know go to that work you should you know face that uh, dishonor whatever it is i should not so when the situation comes when the situation comes dire situation we all want to save ourselves first we do not think about all of us as a whole we think about how can i avoid this situation mullika is trying to do that so she knows that and 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 uh, thakur ji is is uh, denying she is saying that i can't don't tell me i can't do that they don't even know clearly what is uh, promotho up to but they have an idea that whatever it is it is not going to be a respectable for a, 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 a cultured family or a good family or reputable family whatever so it is not something respectable whatever uh, promotho is going to find for them they know that they have they have uh, got that uh, idea and when mullika said uh, to the boy and the girl that didn't i know i, I, I am a woman and i can look at, at the at, at her eye sorry at his eyes i am a woman and i can look at his eyes and i can tell the, uh, what what is that look in his eyes so mullika knew that promotho being a father figure or middle aged man uh, feels like we can trust him but there is something doubtful in the in the look of his eyes mullika knew that at least mullika told so uh, when the boy and the girl came now mullika and uh, thakur ji they are trying to you know uh, play a kind of musical ball that you take the job and you take the job no i can take it because they are not thinking that is why we can understand that when in dire situations you think of your life only you think of your reputation only you think of your honor only all the time we say because we are in good situations we say that i care about you i care about all i care about this and that but it is actually tested when the situation comes 
like the existence of god is tested when the situation comes otherwise you can uh, you know chant in the mornings and evening yada yada hi dharmasya it doesn't matter when the situation comes then it is tested <laughs> dharma and adharma so naturally uh, mullika and thakur ji their conversation is showing us the psychology and the dire situation in which they are uh, you know feeling themselves insecure and they are like uh, they are trying to be uh, they are trying to save their own honor but not caring about the others honor. that's why thakur ji is saying i can do it and mullika is saying you should do it why should i go first etc but the compulsion comes they must go they must accept the fate because there is something called stomach there is something called hunger that makes them you know vulnerable to such situations nothing they can do about it so they go to promatho and now we come to the situation uh that uh, promatho has managed to uh you know create there is a house the description of the house is that the house belonged uh, to a the house had belonged to a muslim family then promatho managed promato being a hindu managed to cause a riot in kolkata kolkata is hindu majority area and if a riot you know starts there you know that the muslims being a minority they will flee from here to east bengal so naturally promato caused a riot provoked a riot when the riot started the muslim family they left their home and they went to you know somewhere we can expect that it is east bengal so the house was free to you know gain for uh, promato it was free for him he just took the house it was easy for him to get in now without any cost now he is renting the house he is giving it to these vulnerable people see the equation promatho got a house without any expense this house now belongs to promatho these people i mean four families or five families they are you know being uh, given shelter by promatho the shelter is not free there is a rent and the rent will go to the house owner promatho so you will live in that house you will give the rent to promatho promatho is giving you a job the job is prostitution now because promatho is giving you the job promatho will get a commission from your earnings because number 2 income number 2 income number 3 the customer whom promatho will be providing the service of you know uh, a prostitute he will uh, the promatho will take a, a fee from that customer income number 3 income number 4 promatho owns a car and for these women he has managed that the safe car and you know that car will come to this house take the woman to the work and you know get her back to this house in this way promatho secures the woman inside the house the woman cannot you know get lost number 1 but it feels that promatho is giving them some security apparently the car belongs to promatho the driver is paid by promatho but the car rental i mean you know the cost of going and coming back from the from the work the rental the 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 it goes to promatho as the owner of the car so four incomes four kinds of earnings at one time 
a single person single handedly is doing this business how by exploiting the people who are suffering from this sad migration caused by the partition so what manik bandhupadhyay is trying to show us is that we human beings there is also another belief like the belief in god uh, there is a belief that human beings are inherently good they have good nature they all want to do good things no there is no rule like that you see uh, as as soon as you study a bit of psychology you understand that there is a, a very potent dark side inside uh, all of us and that dark side uh, provokes us lures us to do uh, to show power over you know at least to show power over others around us that i am more powerful than you that kind of intention and uh, it is psychologically uh, proven thing that if you leave uh, five six toddlers in a room and you don't intervene the toddlers after some time a few hours perhaps the toddlers would pick up the weak one and they would be you know they would gang up against the weak one they would you know tease him or her it is it is in human nature we can believe that human beings are good inherently good situations make them bad not only the situation make them bad they are also prone to do evil things human beings are prone to do evil things to each other and that is a root of you know most of the uh, things that happen to us the evil uh, things and the sufferings uh, caused by other human beings actually mm, there is uh, if you are interested there is a novel particular novel by william golding the lord of the flies you can read it okay i'm just mentioning anyway let's come back to this story so we are seeing that there is no god to come and save you there is no law because if the country is in shambles if everything is burning riots are happening and you know people are moving in in uh, you know crores millions and dying in the way and the government is uh, you know not able to cope with it so you can understand that there is no law and order there is no god to come and save you but there are people like this like like promotho who who always try to take advantage of the situation so they do not have a conscience and naturally because they don't have a moral conscience at the end of the story mullika will have to lose that so called conscience and get to a solution but before that before that there is another good part of this story that shows us about the patriarchal system you see when mullika goes inside the house there are other four families who looks at her but doesn't react in any way neither positively nor negatively they are not curious even why because they have come here they know why people come here and they know what happens to them so they know about the past that this woman and her family was in a dire situation that's why she and her family are picked up by this opportunist promotho and they know what is going to happen to these people so they are they, they have nothing new to know you see so naturally uh these people are not curious and they they these four 
families they are uh, just like uh, mullika and her family they are in in that uh, work and uh, they are you know being uh, manipulated by promotho they are caught in the net so naturally there is another scene uh, when uh, mullika sees that uh, there is a woman who calls her brother her brother is you know uh, freshened up and um, he is going outside looking like a babu whereas this woman his sister is an unmarried woman and it says in the story that she has passed the marriageable age okay again look at the phrase marriageable age patriarchy again when you commodify women or men even you know when you commodify a person according to their biological abilities and say that marriageable age that means you know it is a conservative uh, concept anyway the woman is not going to get married and the woman is talking to her brother asking to you know bring some medicine for his wife because the wife is ailing she is ill and she requires some medicines but the brother slaps her i mean the sister slaps her that how how, how do you talk to me like that patriarchy again and after the brother goes out a man comes in and says that he has met the brother and the brother has told him that the money he owed to that man will be given by his sister and if the sister cannot pay up within 2 days the family would be you know uh, thrown out from this house so the brother tries to be a babu the brother tries to go out and have some fresh air but the sister cannot talk to the bro- uh, talk to her brother uh, eye to eye and the wife can suffer but the sister cannot ask for her medicines but the sister has to go to prostitution and pay up his debts that is patriarchy because in patriarchy men never lose honor see whenever in a patriarchal system men say that my honor is gone they blame it on women because of your dressing my honor is gone because of your mm, talking my honor is gone why because i am a man i cannot do anything wrong in a patriarchal system i am always right all the wrong things are always blamed on to women they are objectified commodified and they are always taught the manners and honors and everything and that that you know set of values goes so deep inside our be our 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 hearts that mullika says even even mullika says that sorry give me a second mullika says that the bitch not married doesn't have a husband or a child yet so hoity toity that means having a husband or a child these are you know these are taught by patriarchal society that these should be the achievements if you are a woman and if you do not have these achievements even in our society today you, you will heard sorry you will hear um, you know old women talk like that that uh, get married if you are not married you know that is not something respectable uh, now if you are married you have to have a child otherwise your life is incomplete 
you are not uh, doing your duty as a woman etc you know your life as a woman is failed etc so these are taken as like certificates that you have to gain in order to show society that you are an uh, honorable woman so mullika herself being a woman is looking at the scene but not thinking about the man not thinking about the attitude of the men the the brother and the man who takes this woman by force almost mullika is not judging these men mullika is judging the woman that is again a patriarchal you know teaching that has been rooted inside us that we always try to be biased and we don't uh, measure things equally uh, between male and female but we always try to be uh, extra critical about women and not so critical about men and that is a bias uh, given to us by the patriarchal system now mullika of course she uh, had to go and she goes to uh, promotho before that uh, sister in law thakur ji um, she offered herself that maybe i can go for today uh, i have decided that but ramlochan was sent here uh, specifically with the inst instruction that promotho wants mullika so uh mullika goes there and promotho tries to take uh, tr tries to uh, make uh, more of that opportunity promotho tries to uh, physically uh, have her and uh, that is the paramount of insult mullika realizes because i know that i am in a weak position a vulnerable position i know i blame my fate i blame god i blame you know yes but i am i cannot deny that i am in a position of utter um you know need i need support no one can give it to me but you can with a very very costly deal you are taking my honor away by you know giving me a job of prostitution yes i also know that you are going to be like a mahajan you are going to be like a you know sucking all the money out of me because you are going to earn fourfold for the house for the car uh, commission uh, from the uh, from the woman uh, he has got the job for and commission from the customer fourfold earning you are taking the opportunity of me being in a vulnerable position but you are taking the opportunity monetarily you can relate it with the capitalist system perhaps that someone is powerful he has enough money and you don't have that kind of money so there is a kind of inequality in 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 the system and that system you know the the uh, capitalist person gains more and more and more you have to suffer but you you have to accept you cannot you know uh, go beyond that system but up to this point that was all business now you are becoming like the you you are making me a slave you are not just you are not just making me lose my honor you are making me your slave by you know giving me a dis uh, giving me a, a job that uh, will make me lose my uh, reputation and using my body for your own lust for free as if i am your slave you are doing a business here yes i am losing the business is quite costly for me 
I know that, but I I have no other way. I have accepted that. But you are thinking just because I have accepted that business that you can do whatever you wish to do with me. Mullika is, you know, Mullika is experiencing that that paramount of insult, you know, that highest uh, point of insult at that time. And Mullika decides that I am going to kill this man. He kills that man and comes home. I am not going to go to the detail of the text here, but comes home and tells Thakurji, I have found a way. I have killed this man and I am going to go near the platform, go onto the streets in the evenings, mornings, whenever I can with, uh, you know, wearing that shabby shari, you know, symbolizing that I am a vulnerable woman. I have no money. And if somebody comes, some, uh, some sharp comes to me to have that advantage, to, to uh, have the advantage of my vulnerability, I will go with him, take his money, but I will not lose my honor. Instead, I will reduce the number of such sharks on this earth by killing them. According to traditional morality, murdering cannot be an option. According to law, murdering cannot be an option. But when justice is not there and traditional morality, if you read Nietzsche and everything, you, you know that these things are all ideal for the ideal world. But for the real world, you have to you have to analyze the real world with the real real perceptions, uh, rationalistic point of view, and be practical about what happens in this world. You cannot think about what should happen. In this world, you, you can only focus on what actually happens. Yes, justice should prevail. That doesn't mean justice always prevails. Morality, conscience, good thing, they should be there. But that doesn't mean the world runs on morality. If law and order is just, you know, absent, if government is absent, if God is absent and your situation is there, there is the hungry shark and there is the hungry you and he is uh, taking this opportunity to exploit you, insult you, make you a slave. Then what can you do? Can you just pray to God? Can you just hope that justice will prevail one day and suffer? Manik is not that kind of a man who would suggest something like that. So, he is giving us a quite radical solution. And that's why it's the final solution. The final solution because until the final solution, if you, if you, there is a, there is a uh, line, uh, there is a, there is a, The, the, the second paragraph of the story begins that another day had begun. Perhaps the sun had no option but to come up, chasing away night's shadows. Or else why would the darkness give way to light in this cruel, ugly world? Cruel, ugly world. That is the view that money gets being a realist. If you are you know, a believer of illusions. You will see ugly things, but you will deny it. That is a problem. The problem is that you don't acknowledge the problem. You don't acknowledge the ugliness, the cruelty that is that is uh, all around us. And if you do not acknowledge the problem, you will not go after finding a solution. So Manik tells us about 
the ugly world, the cruel world, and uh, somehow I find this uh, line very, very much, uh, you know, interestingly uh, similar to another uh, line written by Samuel Beckett. The sun shone having no alternative on the nothing new. So nothing new. The world is nothing new. The sun shone having no alternative. The sun rises. The romantics and the hopeful people, optimists, they would say the sun rises every day is a new opportunity. Every day is a new hope, is a new life, etc. Such, such explanations are there. But when a realist says the sun rises, a realist, a, quite a pessimistic view, from a, from a quite a pessimistic view, he would say that because the sun had no option. He just rises. And just like that, if we believe in, yes, yeah, something will happen, something good will come, uh, everything will change one day, as we often say, everything will be all right. How do you know? How do you know when someone says to me, don't worry, everything will be all right. How do you know? That's what I ask. If you don't know, keep your mouth shut. But don't speak irrationally. Everything will be. That is not soothing. That is moronic. That is not a sentence uh, which gives any meaning. But people say that it is very soothing. It is comforting. I don't know. It is illogical, irrational. Manik is trying to give a solution when humanity fails to look in the mirror how cruel it is how you know frustrating its own existence is because of its own cruelties to itself when humanity fails to look at itself and see that then we have to find a solution. However dark is that solution, it doesn't matter. Truth remains truth. If we wait endlessly and you know, that is ideal. Wait for justice, wait for the second coming or something like that. <laughs> but uh, in case of that, I should say, had we but world enough and time. We don't have that. We have a life very limited, very, you know, it is, a, it, is, it is a very limited time. And if you have to wait uh, for decades to get justice, then it, it, it should madden you. It, it maddens you and that's natural. And Manik is trying to show that with this so-called dark story, as I have called it dark reality. So in a way, if you if you have read Manto, you can relate uh, Manik is just just as Manto depicted the horror of partition, the you know how people are exploiting people and how partition affected people's lives and he always focused on the underprivileged and the suffering ones just like that it is very dark to read Manto's uh, stories and uh, here in Manik's story also we find that now these kind of stories this kind of writings are different from those uh, romantics who always uh, who are always optimists and you know uh, or some some people who are uh, some great writers I mean who are always trying to uh, show the positive things out of everything okay these writings are not like that Manik Manto their writings are not like that. So their writings are quite, you know, uh, 
depressing sometimes, sometimes frustrate, frustrating. Uh, but this is how reality actually is. I want to show you another thing at the very uh, end of this uh, session uh, that when Mullika got angry, she had an altercation with uh, Thakurji and she also, uh, you know, just uh, took her child very roughly and put uh, the child somewhere and there was a sentence like that to show you that uh, she was frustrated. She was frustrated and her frustration was coming on to these people. Why? This is actually a displacement. Displacement, I mean, whenever you are having something good, whenever life is going all right, you put your faith in God. Whenever nothing is, when some, nothing is going all right, when nothing is going all right, you cannot blame God because God is not in front of you, God is not listening and you understand that it is, it is futile to show your anger, you, you cannot show. Naturally, whoever is around you and whoever is either in the equal position or subordinate to you, you show the frustration and anger to those people. If you had not, if you had never believed in, you know, illusions to praise, then perhaps when situation came, you would not have that kind of anger and frustration that you cannot uh, direct towards that illusion instead of you are, you know, directing that anger to some people, some human being around you. If you, if you did not have that illusion in the first place, you would not have this displacement and you would not have this. But this is human psychology. This is human psychology, how it works. So, uh, in this story, we have found about the impact of partition, the exploitation of human beings by human beings. The absence of system, the absence of law and order, a dark solution and the patriarchy that uh, rules throughout the psychology, the tension between women and uh, that makes them more vulnerable actually. And of course, the so-called responsible men who are not acting responsibly or unable to act responsibly there are uh, three uh, male figures which should be you know uh, three or four like Gushan he is not even interested in listening to those talks he says that it is not a good thing to hear such talks he just you know stops listening to these people because he cannot take the responsibility and it is he feels that it is disrespectful uh, being a man to listen to you know your wife and your sister talking about you know such jobs and etc. It hurts his ego. Romotho being a man is not acting like a man should do, a gentleman. No. He is not a gentleman, he is a hungry shark. Ramlochan praises Pramatho of his capabilities and everything because to a man, power is everything and that is being praised by Ramlochan. It is not about ethics, but it is about power. Ram, Ramlochan is praising what Pramatho did to cause a riot and how, to, how, he, get, how he got the house and how um, he has managed to run this business. So Ramlochan is praising Pramato of his, uh, what a caliber he has and everything, what a capability, uh, you know, capable person he is. Uh, that is the male ego again about snatching power, etc. That kind of mentality. And there is the brother, the unnamed brother of that unnamed unmarried sister. Epitome of patriarchy that... I can be like a babu, I can go out, I can freshen up, I am free bird because I am a man, but you are a sister, 
you are only sister to me as long as you can pay up i can be fed with your money but if you talk to me eye to eye i can slap you because i am a man and if you cannot pay up or then you are just a dishonorable dis disrespectable uh, woman and you are a dishonor to the family it is not said in the story but we know that whenever such uh, you know monetary relation is not there the woman is the disgrace throw her out etc that is the patriarchal society's you know mindset so all these things are there in this story i don't think if i have missed something but if you have not understood anything if you have um, any kind of you know questions doubts everything you can ask in the comments comments encourage me a lot and uh, like share and subscribe if this video helps you thank you